Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna be trying out a bunch of new Wet n Wild makeup. The beginning of the year is usually when drugstore brands bring out a bunch of new products and that has been the case with Wet n Wild. I found so many new products. We have brow products. There were a ton of different eyeshadow palettes. I only picked up one because I can only try one in a video at a time, but I felt like if I really liked the formula, I could always go back and try more. I have a mascara, a tinted hydrator, a new concealer, and even a new lip product. These are all all under $5, which is what kind of caught my eye when I saw all these new products launch. Wet n Wild is one of the best brands at the drugstore. I feel like they do such a good job creating high quality products that are so incredibly affordable. So we're just gonna test them out. I'm excited to see how everything works. So first up, we have this brow obsessive brow pencil. Um, I picked mine up in the shade medium brown. I'm gonna be doing the eyes first, so I'm gonna fill in my brows first. I always like to do that. Okay, so here's what the brow pencil looks looks like. It's just a classic sharpener, wooden brow pencil. There is a spoolie on the other side, which I personally love. I have to have a spoolie on the end of my brow pencil. So I'm just going to go ahead and brush these up. Actually, I'm going to pin my hair back really quickly. All right, let's start filling in the brows. Hopefully this shade works for me. I'm usually a medium brown in any brow pencil. All right, I'm just going to start to fill this in. Okay, already I feel like the tone is a little too warm for my personal hair color, but that's okay. We can make it work. I'm gonna flip the pencil over and just brush through it to make it look a little softer. This brow formula is definitely a little bit on the waxy side, which used to be pretty typical with a lot of drugstore brow pencil formulas. Until recently, I feel like I've discovered some that are not waxy. I don't usually like a waxy kind of a brow pencil. I just feel like it's harder to fill in and it makes my brows look not so natural. But when I step back and look at this, I feel like it does actually look pretty natural. The tone is just a little too warm for me, but I don't hate it. You know, I feel like my brows still look good. So that's that. I feel like if I accidentally, you know, forgot my brow pencil somewhere, I would not be mad if I picked this up instead. But at the same time, I feel like there are better brow pencils at the drugstore, at least in my opinion. So yeah, that's that. We'll move on. I'm going to use my NARS tinted smudge proof eyeshadow base. So I'm just going to apply this on the lid and I'm just gonna blend this out with a brush. Okay, so they had a bunch of different eyeshadow palettes. Um, some were pretty big and some were just these five pan palettes. I chose the five pan palette that spoke to me most, but they had quite a few shades in this. This is the new Wet n Wild Color Icon five pan shadow palette. I picked mine up in the shade Camo Flaunt and I picked it up because there's a glitter shade in the middle and you guys know how much I love a little bit of sparkle on the eyes. So let's try this out. I'm gonna start off with this medium brown tone. I grabbed my receipt so I could see how much these were. Guys, this was $2.98, so like $3. That's so crazy. So I'm just gonna start to buff this into the crease a little bit as my transition. I feel like it's already blending so nicely. I do feel like it skipped a little on this edge here and that usually happens when I don't quite blend out the eyeshadow primer on the edge of my eye. So I'm gonna try to fix that. I think that's a little bit better. Wow, I already really like how well that blended. All right, we're gonna go into the other side of the pan, which has this deep brown shade, and I'm wanting to use this to kind of deepen up the outer corner, so I'm gonna go ahead and press this onto that outer edge, and then use what's left to start to sculpt the crease a little bit more as well. Well, I'm also really impressed with the blendability of this shade as well. I think it looks really nice so far. For $3, are you kidding? Hopefully the shimmers are good too. So I'm gonna take this shimmer, it's kind of a deep taupey color, so pretty. I'm going to take this on my finger and I'm going to apply this kind of on the outer portion of the lid just using my finger. Wow, that's a really pretty shade. You could totally put this all over the lid. I'm just trying to basically try out every color in this palette. So I'm gonna do this on the other side. Next, I'm gonna dip into this warmer shade in the palette, which I actually like the color selection in here because I feel like you could do a whole look with just these two shadows and a whole look with just these two and then add the glitter if you wanted. But again, I'm trying to use them all. The formula when I put my finger in the pan is so buttery. It's actually really, really nice. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and lay this on the eye, kind of filling in the areas that we don't have any shadow yet. 
It's kind of an interesting color. It's almost like a rusty rose with a gold reflect, but I still think it's really nice. I kind of like that other taupey shimmer shade a little more than the pink one, but both are really buttery and both are really pretty. Now, for the moment we've all been waiting for, at least I've been waiting for this, I wanna try out the glitter in the center. So again, I'm just gonna take this on my finger. I don't know if I've ever tried wet and wild glitters before. We'll see how this goes. I'm just gonna apply this on that inner portion, just kind of tapping to apply. Okay, wow, I feel like that actually applied pretty nicely. I feel like I almost grabbed too much on my finger. I'm gonna try to go with a little less on this other side, just so I have a bit more control. I can always layer up more if I want to. Okay, yeah, I feel like that's actually really nice. And I like how the glitter is fine. So it gives such a pretty look if you want to just kind of tap on a little bit. It will just give a bit of sparkle or you can build it up like I did and get quite a bit of glitter. Now there is quite a bit of fallout as well. So that will be interesting to see, you know, as I wear it throughout the night. Let's go ahead and try out a new mascara also from Wet n Wild. This is the Big Papa Mascara. It's supposed to be very volumizing. All right, so here is the packaging. There's a little crown at the top. It's a pretty big mascara. All right, here's what the wand looks like. It's got that hourglass shape to it. I'm interested to see how this looks. So I'm gonna go ahead and just apply this on the top lashes only for now. I like to do this especially after using glitter so that the mascara kind of catches any fallout. This formula is a little bit thinner than what I was expecting for a volumizing mascara. I feel like I've been building this up quite a bit to be able to achieve the volume that I was looking for, but maybe that's what they were going for. Maybe they wanted something that you could build up. It says it delivers volume, length, and thickness in one coat. I'd have to say that it probably is gonna take a few coats to get insane drama, because it looked pretty natural upon the first coat for me, but at least I got to build it up. That doesn't look too bad. Sometimes too, with a brand new mascara, I feel like with some formulas, it definitely can take a little while for it to thicken up, like after you open it. That's how I've felt with a lot of my other mascaras that I own. So maybe it's one of those situations too where like it's brand new, so it needs to like dry out a little bit before it can really build. I will say though, once you kind of have one thin coat on the lashes, it does seem to grip and build pretty nicely. Okay, so that's what the mascara looks like. I think it looks pretty good. Obviously with mascara, I have to do a little bit of a wear test, so I'll be sure to leave a note in the description box down below letting you know how it wore. I'm just gonna take a makeup wipe and clean up the glitter fallout under the eye, which there's quite a bit actually. Okay, we're gonna move on to complexion. Wet n Wild just released these new Bare Focus Tinted Hydrators. It's a tinted skin veil. It has sheer to medium coverage. It has hyaluronic acid and squalene. Um, let's see what it says. It's also oil-free and it's supposed to give a flawless, softly luminous complexion. Okay, so I'm gonna try out the shade Fair. I'm just gonna put this on the back of my hand. I don't know how much I'm gonna use, so I'm gonna start off kind of small and see. I just have it on the back of my hand, and let's do one side of the face first. So I'm just gonna start to apply this with my Fenty Beauty brush. Okay, so actually this kind of has more coverage than what I was anticipating. It doesn't really have a smell to it either. I'm gonna take what's left and apply it to the forehead. I did use everything that was on the back of my hand for one half of my face though, so maybe that's why it gave me more coverage. You can still see my skin through it though, which I do like. I'm gonna go ahead and press this in with my sponge to get rid of any brush lines. That actually looks really nice on the skin. And it feels like, at least so far, it feels like it really meshes into the skin. Rather than feeling like it's sitting on top when I look up close, I can't tell that I'm wearing anything, which is really nice. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and apply this to the other half of my face. I usually don't pair more like tinted moisturizer products with a more glam eye look, but we'll make it work. And I feel like it actually makes my skin look really fresh. I'm gonna build up a little more coverage on this side of the face, just over the areas where I have a few more blemishes, just to see how it builds. I'm gonna take what's left on the back of my hand, on my sponge, and just kind of press that over top of this half of the face. Again, just to make sure it's pretty even over top of blemishes. It feels very like lightweight. It feels very cooling on the skin. It definitely feels like it would also be pretty hydrating throughout the day. I like it just based off of my first initial impressions. It's definitely something that I could see myself reaching for, especially on like no makeup makeup days. And it really did seem like the coverage was pretty buildable. But I would agree that it's like a sheer to medium coverage because that was me building it up and you can still see my skin through it, which I do like that. And this retailed for $4.98, so five bucks which I will not complain about. Wow, I actually feel like my skin looks really nice and that shade seemed to be a really good match too. 
There was also a concealer that I saw that I personally don't own. I don't know if this is new or not, but it's new to me. It's the Wet n Wild Mega Last Incognito Concealer, and I picked mine up in the shade Light Beige. And unlike the Tinted Hydrator, this is supposed to be an all day full coverage concealer. So a little bit more of a full coverage formula. Here's what the applicator looks like. Let's go ahead and apply this under the eyes. Oh, I probably could have used a little bit of a lighter shade. Hopefully this doesn't oxidize too much. I guess we'll find out. I'm just applying this underneath the eyes. And I'm actually gonna blend that out first before I put it anywhere else on the skin. I'm just blending it out with my sponge. Okay, I think that looks nice on the skin. Definitely gives really good coverage, but it doesn't feel heavy or cakey on the skin, which is nice. I actually think that's the only place I'm going to put the concealer because I really wanna see how that tinted hydrator works and wears throughout the rest of the night. So we'll just leave it there. I'm gonna go ahead and set my under eyes and my complexion with my Wet n Wild Photo Focus Translucent Powder. So I'm just gonna take that on a small powder brush and I'm going to set the under eyes as well as the T-zone. And then I'm taking a little bit of a larger brush and setting the rest of the face. Okay, again, especially after using powder, I feel like I definitely could have gone for a little bit of a lighter shade in that concealer, but it's okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and go over the powder with my sponge to make sure everything is nice and blended. All right, moving back to the eyes really quickly. I'm gonna dip back into that matte light brown shade in the palette. I'm gonna tap off the extra and then apply this along the entire lower lash line. Then I'm gonna take a little bit of this pink kind of gold shade. I'm gonna spray my brush with a setting spray just to make sure it's nice and damp so there's not too much fallout. And I'm going to apply this along that lower lash line as well. I actually really like just those two on the lower lash line. So I think I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm gonna go back into the Wet n Wild Big Papa Mascara and apply that to the lower lashes. All right, I'm just gonna warm up the complexion with my Winky Luxe Coffee Bronzer in the shade Latte. I'm just gonna add a bit of warmth across the forehead and also along the cheeks, along the jawline, and as always, I drag it down the neck. I'm gonna take a little bit of the ColourPop Pressed Powder Blush in the shade Love Story and just apply this to the apples of the cheeks. And then I'm gonna take my ColourPop Super Shock Highlighter in the shade Lunch Money on the back of my sponge that I was using. And I'm just going to highlight the high points of the face with this. All right, so for lips, I saw that they had these new Cloud Pout Marshmallow uh, Lip Mousses. And honestly, you guys, when I was looking through the colors, I didn't really find any colors that I loved. So naturally I bought three. <laughs> but I bought three because I thought maybe I could try them on and see if they look different when they're actually on my lips. But just upon looking at them, none of the colors really inspired me. There weren't that many nude colors or like neutrals. Um, they were all pretty bright and pinky, so. I don't know, we'll see how these work. I'm gonna go ahead and try out maybe this one. I don't know, I really don't know. I don't feel like any of them really match the eye look, maybe the red. I don't know you guys. We'll just try this one. Okay, this is called Pour Some Sugar On Me and these were $4. I don't really know what the formula is gonna be like. Marshmallow Lip Mousse, okay. Oh. Might be fine. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off the foundation that's on my lips though. And I'm not gonna do like a lip liner yet because I just wanna kind of see what these are like. So I'm gonna go ahead and try out this shade. Okay, yeah, definitely whipped and moussey. It goes on way more sheer than what it looks like. Oh, I actually really like that formula. But again, not sure if this color works with the eye look. And this one right here is even brighter. Whoa, why is it stingy? Is it supposed to be like plumping? I don't know. I kind of want to try out this darker shade. I definitely think these would be really pretty in the springtime. Or if you did a makeup look that was more lip focused, then these colors would make a little more sense. All right, let's try out the shade Fluff You. It's like a pinky watermelon red. It's kind of pretty. The texture is actually really nice on this. It feels so comfortable on the lips. I feel like you can really sheer it out or build it up, just depending on the effect that you want. But overall, it is definitely more of like a sheer formula. Hmm, okay. I actually like that a lot. I'm interested to see how it wears or if it dries down at all. So yeah, it's kind of nice. I feel like now that that's on, I need a little bit of a brighter cheek. So I'm gonna look for a pink blush. Okay, I grabbed this one from Neutrogena. It's the Healthy Skin Blush in Vibrant 20. Maybe that'll kind of help tie in the pink tones a little bit. Yeah, I definitely still feel like the eyeshadow doesn't quite match, but I feel like the pink cheeks made it a little bit easier to blend everything. All right, so 
I'm not going to apply any setting spray today because we are trying out two different complexion products. So we're just gonna move back to brows. I'm gonna just brush them up really quickly and then I actually bought a brow gel too that we're gonna try out. So this is the new Wet n Wild Brow Sessive Brow Shaping Gel and I got mine in the shade Clear. While I'm trying to get this open, I'm noticing the lips. I really like how it didn't look patchy where some of those moussey type products, I feel like it's easy for them to look pretty patchy. And without using a lip liner, I feel like overall it looks really nice. This is like really hard to open for some reason. There we go. So here is the spoolie. The spoolie reminds me a lot of the Glossier Boy Brow. I wonder if that's what they were kind of going for. Yeah, it kind of has that same vibe and texture as the Glossier Boy Brow. I'm trying to wipe off a little bit of the uh, excess product because there was quite a bit in that spoolie. Okay, so once it's applied, I'm just taking my finger and kind of pressing brow hairs down. Okay, well that was interesting. I'm very interested to see how it holds up, if it dries down at all. But based on my first impressions, it's very, very similar to the Glossier Boy Brow, which I love. So we'll see if it lives up to that expectation. All right, so that completes this makeup look using a bunch of new Wet n Wild products. Honestly, my complexion looks so smooth and I love my eye look as well. Again, I will be sure to leave a note as far as the wear goes on all of these products in the description box down below. But based off my first impressions, I'm actually very impressed by almost everything that I tried. Let's go through everything really quickly. So the brow pencil, I wasn't mad at it, but I just know that there are better brow pencils at the drugstore. I'm currently obsessed with the Milani one, also the Maybelline one's really good. But for $2, I feel like this is actually a pretty good pencil, but if you're just looking to have something that's super reliable, um, that's a formula that I love, I personally would recommend, yeah, either the Milani or the Maybelline one. The eyeshadow palettes really floored me. I'm excited to continue to try out these palettes for $3, are you kidding me? And five gorgeous shades. I'm definitely curious to see if the glitter falls down at all throughout the day. It seems to be holding in place as of now, um, but I will keep you guys posted on that. As far as the mattes and shimmers go, they were buttery. They they blended really well. I'm actually very excited about these and I will definitely go back and try to find some other colors that inspire me. The tinted hydrator, my skin looks so smooth. Obviously, I'm gonna have to update you guys on how this wears, but based off my first impressions, it felt very, very high end. It felt very luxurious. I liked the texture. I liked the coverage that it gave. I could definitely see myself reaching for this. So yeah, I'll keep you posted. I mean, if this wears well, this could potentially be one of my new favorite like drugstore no makeup makeup type products, which is exciting. I'm really excited about that. Um, the concealer, besides the shade being a little too dark, I feel like the concealer is what's making my complexion look so airbrushed underneath my eyes. So I might go back and pick up a little bit of a lighter shade. I will say when I put powder on it, it kind of looks a little dry up here. So maybe next time I would use like a lighter powder or a more hydrating powder just to see how that looks and works. Um, but overall, I'm really happy with the texture of that, but I do need a different shade. I'm actually pleasantly surprised by these Cloud Pop Marshmallow Lip Mousses, even though the shades are a little bright and I wish they had a couple more like muted, more neutral colors in the range. I do feel like I'll get use out of these, especially moving into spring, like I was saying. I think, you know, just my out my eyes and just picture a more fresh complexion with the bright cheeks and this lip and I feel like it would be a really great spring type product. Again, I will keep a note in the description box letting you know how it wore off throughout the day. It feels like it has dried down a little bit, but it's not um, uncomfortable at all. It still has a little bit of flexibility and give, so I'm actually pleasantly surprised by this formula. I think it's really nice. The brow gel, this could be a Glossier dupe. I don't know yet. I will update you guys in the description and I'll have to test it side by side with my actual Glossier boy brow, but it seemed very, very similar and texture, even down to the spoolie, it's like very similar. So could be a good alternative. Let me see how much this was. I think this might've been $3. I don't know which one was $2 and which one was $3 actually, looking at my receipt. Either way, very affordable. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. Overall, I'm very impressed with what I tried out. It makes it so much better that it's all from Wet n Wild, or almost all of it that I tried is from Wet n Wild, which is so affordable. I feel confident in my makeup look right now, and I literally didn't even spend hardly anything on all of these products. 
I'm excited. Again, check the description box to see how everything wore. Oh, the mascara. I knew I was forgetting something. I felt like the mascara looks really nice. I don't know if it's like wowing me enough to top my other drugstore mascaras at this point. Plus we're gonna have to see if it smudges or flakes, but I do feel like it looks nice. I feel like my lashes are a little bit lifted and volumized. Um, I definitely feel like it takes a couple layers to really get the volume that I personally look for in a mascara. So that's just something to pay attention to, but who knows? I'll keep using it. I'll try it out. Um, but based on my first impressions, I feel like there's better at the drugstore just for my personal taste in mascaras. All right. So that completes this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below if you have tried any of these Wet n Wild products. Also, I would love to know if you have any other products from Wet n Wild that you love. I feel like it would be really fun for me to do maybe a full face of Wet n Wild products. Have I done that yet? I don't think I've ever done a full face of Wet n Wild. I think that would be very interesting to try and to do because again, they're so affordable, but I'm so happy with how my complexion looks right now. So let me know what your favorites are from Wet n Wild. Let me know what you think of any of these new products that I tried out. If you've tried them, I'd love to hear your feedback. If you're new here, hi, my name is Allie and I would love for you to join the family. You can do so by hitting the subscribe button. And if you're already a subscriber, but you wanna be notified on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, click on the bell after you subscribe and you'll get a notification every single time I post. That's it for me today. I hope you guys have an amazing day wherever you are and I will see you in my next video. Love you.